Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video in this Golang series. In this video, we're going to explore that how we can take input from the user. Taking input from user is really one of the most essential thing you should do, whether you are learning any programming language. It teaches you a lot about how things are treated and how you can do manipulation in that. So for this, we are going to create uh, this video as well as the next video is also going to be uh, kind of a similar stuff that we'll be doing. So let's move on and create another folder. And this one is going to be 03. Let's call this as, of course, user input, not in uppercase, <laughs> user input. There we go, nice and easy. And let's go do the usual stuff. New file, which is going to be main.go. And yes, of course, I'll do this for every single of the video. So right click and open it integrated terminal do regular stuff, we go ahead and say we want to go ahead mod in it. Instead of saying github.com slash username and stuff, we'll be just saying it as user input. Uh, shortly we'll be doing that formal stuff, but after some time. So let's go ahead and use the user input, nice and easy. Now moving on, the first thing we obviously know that this is going to be a package main, and uh, we want to create a function. This function is going to be simply main, there we go, nice and easy. And let's go ahead and do a simple thumped. And this is going to say, instead of directly putting it up, let's store that into a variable because now we know how to deal up with that. We're gonna use the simple walrus syntax and let's put up a welcome message for the user. So we're gonna simply say that this is a simple welcome to user input program or something like that. And we will be just going ahead and say, hey, just go ahead and print that out. Okay, nice and easy. Now, the goal is really simple for this video. We want to take input from the user. So that sounds pretty obvious. Every single language has some way of taking input from the standard input, in my case, the keyboard. I want to store that into a, into a variable and just want to throw that out. Pretty nice and easy. For this, we need to understand two things. First, is there a library that can help us? And something very special for the Golang, which is comma OK syntax, also known as comma error syntax. This is the very first time you're gonna see this syntax, so get friendly with that very quickly. It's a really simple one. First, let's go on to uh, the web browser, and go.dev is also an official website for Go, and if you want to search for any package, pkg.go.dev is the official resource for that. And the package that we are going to be uh, reading a little bit about is actually the buff.io. There's also a package named as OS, which you can study on your own, a little bit on your own, but I'll show you a little bit detail on that. So this is the buff IO, and this is how the entirety of the package is going to look like. On the left-hand side, you're going to have a bit of overview, example, some constants and variable, and some functions for that. So as you can see, this package is designed to do a lot. This is a buffer which can read from input output. So you can read from the keyboards, you can read from other printers and other resources, and you can also uh, use that buffer to store things into variable. Most important thing, if you click on the functions, this is where majority of the things get interested. So you can scan for bytes, you can scan for line, you can scan for runes. Uh, in case you have watched the previous video carefully, we had a little discussion on that. And in the types as well, we can have a read writer, we can have a reader, scanner, and a whole bunch of things. If I go ahead and click on this, you can see that we can have this type. Remember I told you about the types? Almost everything is a type. This is exactly the same. So this is how you get that. Now, I do understand that in this case, uh, things like this new reader, how to use that is a little bit confusing at this, at this point, which is totally okay. As you will read more documentation along with me, I'll get more uh, easier way of reading this. So I just want to get you more friendly, don't want to scare you from the documentation. That's why I'm giving you small doses of these documentation. Okay, moving on. So now that we know about this, and also you can go a little bit back and uh, talk about more stuff, like I can go ahead and say I want to read more about the OS package itself, you can go ahead, explore this little bit. All I'm saying you here is you don't need to go ahead and do everything, understand everything, just try a little bit and just read, like for example, just read about this one here and try to see what it does, what it doesn't and just get friendly with that. Moving on, let's go ahead and take down this problem now that we are aware of a couple of these packages. So what we're gonna do now is first, I need to create a reader. Now in this reader, I'm not gonna be declaring the time it is, I'm gonna be using a walrus operator because sometimes, in fact, majority of the time when you use these packages, you don't know what is coming up. And that's exactly this walrus operator is being designed for. 
And from this package buff.io, remember and notice I'm not importing that first because you don't. In the case of Golang, you usually don't import that. You just use many of these packages just like that. So in the buff.io, I'm going to go ahead and say I want to create a new reader. Remember, we just studied about it. And that's it. That's all I have. I am using this new reader. But from where you should be reading up? And for that, we have another library, which is OS. And from the OS, I want to read from standard input output. So standard IN is the way I'm going to be reading from it. Now notice a couple of things that buff.io is all lowercase, OS is all lowercase, but the standard input, the S is capital, and in the new reader, the N is capital. And again, camel casing is going on in here. But remember this, this is very important and important for us to understand that what is public and stuff. Okay, so this is all good. Now let's go ahead and see and provide a message to the user that, hey, uh, what should we expect to read up here? So I'm going to go ahead and put up a simple message and that's going to be saying that enter the rating for our pizza. Maybe. I like that. Okay, so there we go. And since this is a print ln, it's going to automatically inject a slash n at the end of this line, so I don't need to do that. Okay, nice and easy. This is all going nice. And this is giving the regged squiggly line because the package is not yet imported. It will get import as soon as I save this. So don't you worry on that. In fact, let's go ahead and save this one. Notice here the buff IO is here, the OS is here, but still it's going to give me error on reader because I'm not using it anywhere. So let's go ahead and see this. So notice here, if you hover to this, it says, hey, uh, this is a pointer. I'll not go into too much detail of pointer, at least as of now, but this is okay. Okay, moving on. So now somebody is listening or reading from it. Now let's go ahead and say that whatever this reader actually reads, I want to store that into a variable. And this is where the comma okay syntax come in. And some people also call this as or uh, error okay syntax. And what does this mean? In the language Go, we actually don't have the try catch. So if something goes wrong, there is nobody to catch that because the paradigm of the Go, it expects, the language design expects that you treat problems or the errors as something like, like a variable, like a true false value or something else. So this is what exactly the commas OK syntax is. It says that you are either going to get input or you might probably receive an error. You can go ahead and hold this error into a variable like error, but if you don't care about anything in the Go, you just use an underscore for that. And in case you don't care about the input, you can also use an underscore. Just wait a second, I'll show you that. So again, we're gonna use a walrus operator and we're gonna simply say that, hey, reader, this reader has uh, more it can read for uh, the slice, bytes, and read string, and a whole bunch of other things. What we are interested in this case is just this read string. And uh, we're gonna keep on reading till, uh, let me put up this, and a slash n. So this is an ender that you want to read, but how long do you want to read? I want to keep on reading as soon as a slash n is there, so that's, that's fine for us. Okay, now let's go ahead and say that I want to just print this out. So let's first go ahead and do this, and then we're gonna talk a little bit more on comma okay or comma error syntax. I'm gonna go ahead and say that uh, we will saying, uh, thanks for rating. And then I'm gonna use just a comma, and then here I can just say this, input. <laughs> really bad, input. Okay, this is fine and easy, and why are you giving me error? Because yeah. Okay, looks nice. Let's go ahead and try this out, and then we're gonna talk a little bit on this comma okay or comma error syntax. I read comma error syntax. Let's go ahead and save this one and say this. This is go run main.go. As soon as I run this, it says, hey, uh, please enter a rating for our pizza. I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'll rate you five star for that and hit enter. New line comes up and the next execution comes in which says, thanks for rating five. Okay, that is nice, but I want to get, go ahead and bring your attention to something more. Let's duplicate this line. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, this is printf this time. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, type of this rating is, and let's use our friendly guy, which is percent capital T, if I can put that. And I want to go ahead and find out what's the type of the rating of this input. Let's go ahead and save this and try to run this one more time. So I'm gonna go ahead and say this, enter the rating, this time four, and four is a string. This is the most important thing because the next video we're gonna take care of this thing as well. Now coming back, 
Notice here I'm saying input and I'm saying this comma and the underscore. Now it is expected that when you're reading something from something like a standard input, there might be chances that something might go wrong. And for that wrong thing, there might be an error that comes in. So in that case, you can go ahead and store that error just like this. Now this is giving me problem because I'm not using this, uh, but this is the regular syntax of how we deal everything in the Golang. This is known as comma okay or comma error syntax. If everything goes right, then it will give me input in this if everything goes in. If anything goes wrong, this is part where you can assume it a little bit like a catch. So this first part is the try and the second part is the catch. If any error comes in, this will be catch up here. Now in majority of the cases, like not majority, but in a lot of cases, you don't worry about the errors. So you can go ahead and say underscore up here. And there are some cases in which we just care about the errors only. Yes, there are cases for that, but not the input. You can go ahead and say error, and I don't care about what the actual input you're gonna be saying, so I can just go ahead and do that. Surely there are better syntax, this is not a good way of doing that. But all I'm telling you, this is possible. We do that during loops and stuff, but this is a comma error syntax. We'll have a lot of discussion around this. So there we go. Now you are quite familiar about the comma error syntax, comma okay syntax, and a bit about the libraries that we have explored a little bit. So this is really the simplest way of taking input from the user, but there are problems here right now. This is a string type. So if I want to do further error, further operations on this input, this is a string. So I can do only string related input, not number related input. So I need to learn how to convert this string into numbers and some related conversion so that I can treat this a little bit better. Let's go ahead and catch up and do all of this in the next video.